Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to be creating a run cycle for our character, and also a super simple idle animation. So I've got the walk open from last episode, and I'm just going to go on to frame 1, since this is a fairly good starting point for the first frame of our run animation as well. And then I'll close the walk action, create a new run action, and just press the F button once again to save it. I've made this reference sheet for the run animation. So you can see just like with the walk, we've got our two contact poses on either side, and then the down pose, the passing pose, and the up pose in between. The main difference, of course, between the walk and the run is that with the run, we've got this one pose where both the character's feet are simultaneously off the ground. Okay, let's come in and create our first contact pose. So I'm going to bring this foot a little bit further forward and rotate it a little bit more. And I'll of course have to bring the hips down on the Z axis so that the heel can make contact with the ground there. And we'll bring this other leg out, just trailing behind like so. And I'll reset the rotation on the toes there. And probably want to rotate the hips so that the character is sort of leaning into the run to make it look a little bit more energetic. And from front view, I'm also going to make the chest uh, swing a little bit more dramatically from side to side. So I'll rotate that a bit on the z-axis. And just rotate the neck counter to that to try and keep the head stable. Then the arms are going to come further up. Something like that, perhaps. I might just stick the elbow out a little bit more and just rotate the forearm to cross over the body a little bit more. Alright, and I'll bend the elbow here as well a little bit, and maybe bring that further back, like so. That should be just about okay for the first pose. Just going to try and get the head uh, facing forward a little bit better. And then I'll select all the bones, press I to insert a keyframe, and then I'll copy this pose with Control c And this is going to be a 8 frame run animation. So I'll come forward 8 frames to frame 9, and shift Control v and insert keyframe. So we've got our two contact poses. Let's now come to frame five for the passing pose. So for this pose, I'll bring the left leg back a bit, getting ready to sort of spring off the ground, like so. I'll bring the hips down a tiny bit, and this leg is just going to be passing the sort of middle of the character here. I'll insert a frame on that and go to frame 3 for the down position. So here this leg, uh, or this foot rather, is going to be flat on the ground. The hips are going to be nice and low. And this can maybe be trailing back a little bit further. Alright, I'll insert a frame. And then our up pose isn't actually going to be on frame 7, but rather on frame 8, uh, just before the last frame. And this is going to be the highest point, but it's not going to be much higher than the contact frame. All right, let's insert a keyframe and have a look. I think this is looking okay. I think the character can maybe go a little bit lower down on this down pose, just to try and emphasize the weight a bit more. And on frame 2, we of course want the foot to have already slammed down. And we can have the toes flopping behind, as we did with the walk. I'll do the same thing with the toes of the other foot here. Just have those bending back. Like so. Alright. Let me make sure these toes aren't sinking below the ground. Just fine-tune that. And going through these last frames here, I just want to make sure that it never goes below or above the ground until frame 8. So just going to keep that on the ground there. Maybe bend the toes a little bit more. Okay, getting ready to spring up on frame 8 here. Okay, I think to really see how this is going, we're going to need to copy over the second step. So, as you hopefully remember from last episode, we need to make sure that all of the keyframes here are selected, and all of the bones are selected in the dope sheet summary as well. And then we can press Control c 
bring the playhead to the last frame, frame 9, and press shift Control v Alright, this is now 17 frames long, so we'll set the end frame here to 16, and let's now press play. I'll select all of the bones and just hide them so we can get a better view here. The character's body here is maybe a little bit rigid, you can sort of perhaps rotate that a bit throughout the run, and the head is looking a little bit uh, rigid as well, so we can uh, hopefully address those two things. And from front view here, this is looking okay, but I just like the uh, weight of the characters to sort of shift over the leg that's on the ground. So those are the three things that we'll be uh, looking at next. So let's unhide the bones here, and I'm going to delete these uh, copied keyframes so we can just focus on the first step. So I think on this down pose we can maybe rotate the character just a little bit forward and maybe have the head come down a little bit as well. Insert a keyframe and then over here maybe it's not quite back to how it was yet. Insert a keyframe and then by frame 8 it kind of recovered. Alright, his upper body is looking a little less plank-like, which is nice. Let's then go into front view. I'd like to have it so that as the character's foot comes to sort of plant itself on the ground here, the weight of the character should shift over that leg. So to do this, we're going to want to modify the X position of the hips but it might be a little bit irritating trying to do that with all of these other keyframes for the hips getting in our way. Now we don't want to just delete those since we've got important information stored in those keyframes like the up-down movement of the hips and the uh, rotation of the hips as well. But what we can do is just fold out the hips here and we can delete just the keyframes for the X location of the hips since that's what we want to modify. So I'm going to go and do a box select and just delete uh, all of these X location keyframes between the first and the last. And then I'm going to come over onto frame 3, which is when the foot first is resting completely on the ground here. And at this point, the weight will be shifted over like so. So insert a keyframe for that. And then after that, uh, let's say frame 5, the weight should still be over that leg but after that it should start shifting back to the center. All right, now I might have overdone this a little bit, so I'm just going to bring it back slightly on the x-axis, and I'll shift this over a little bit on frame 5 as well. Hopefully this makes the run animation a little bit more lifelike, as though the character actually has mass, and I think it's sort of managing to sell that illusion. So as the final touch, let's just make the hands a little bit floppy like we did in the walk animation. So coming onto frame 3 here, I'll just rotate the hands up, and I'll rotate this hand back, like so, insert a keyframe, and that should be okay. So let's now select all of this, copy and paste, and let's play. Okay, I think this is looking alright for now, so I'm going to leave the run animation here, and focus now on the idle animation. So Alt H to unhide the bones and I'll close out the run animation, create a new action called idle and just press the F button as always. And then going to frame one, I'll reset the pose with Alt R and Alt G and let's then just set up a slightly natural looking pose here, bring the hips down a bit, uh, bring the arms to the sides Loosen out the fingers slightly. Okay, let me rotate that down. And I'll copy this pose uh, for the arm over onto the other side with Control C and Shift Control V. And maybe the character will favor one foot. So bring, say, his left foot forward a bit. Rotate that out. And uh, maybe this is easiest from top view. I can just bring this foot back like so. And that looks all right for the first frame. So I'll select that, press I to insert the keyframe. And then I'll just go forward a couple of frames, say to frame 9. And just want to try to give 
sort of indication that the character is breathing instead of just standing uh, stock still. So I'll just move the hips down a tiny bit on the z-axis. Maybe the arms can come out a tiny bit and the fingers can just make, say, a slight gripping motion. Something like that. All right, so I'll insert a keyframe for that. And then I want to copy over uh, this first frame to frame 17. So I'll just right click on the top most keyframe to select the whole column, press Shift D to duplicate it and just drag it out here to frame 17 so that uh, this is halfway in between. And if I press Alt A, you can see he's breathing in and out. It's going very rapidly at the moment. So what we can do is just scale out the animation to make it slower. So I'll select all the keyframes and then S will scale around the playhead so we want to scale from the beginning, so let's just skip to the first frame, S, and scale this up a bunch of times, say until the last frame lands on about frame 100. So that's over there. So I'll set my end frame now to 99, and if I press Alt A to play, we can see that the character no longer looks like he's hyperventilating. Of course, this is far from the most exciting animation in the world, but uh, it at least gives some indication that the character's alive while he's just standing around. So uh, this is where we're going to leave off for this episode. And uh, until next time, cheers.